So you should always be pre prepared for a thirty to fifty thousand dollar issue when it comes to a failure of a septic system. So that call comes in and, and Terry answers the phone. Um, after getting the, the information, she'll start asking qualifying questions for the inspection. First question usually is, is the home occupied or unoccupied? And there's a reason for that. If the home is occupied, that is like a car that's being test driven every day. So if you're going to buy that car and that car has been running every day, taking those people to and from work, grocery shopping, kids' soccer games, things of that nature, we know that the car is functioning. If it wasn't, it'd be parked. If a home is unoccupied, that would be like looking at a car that's been sitting, hasn't been driven, driven. you go, you get in, you start the key, car turns on, but you don't move it anywhere. So an unoccupied home needs to be test driven. And the way we test drive it is by performing the PSMA hydraulic load test where we add the water to the absorption area based on the number of bedrooms, which is a state regulated number. Three bedrooms is four, 400 gallons. Four bedrooms is 500 gallons. It's always 100 gallons more than the bedrooms. So we do that for two days, monitor the water, measure how much came in, measure the drop. Three days later, if it all goes away, goes back to the starting procedure, we've given that septic system a test drive. And now it's safe to say whether it's operating or not operating. If someone purchases a home without doing a hydraulic load test, the home's been vacant. Like this one, I don't even know how long is that. This, this is at least six months, if not longer, this has been vacated. This drain bed could have been completely oversaturated. Six months goes by without a lick of water coming into it and it could have all drained away. You come out here and do an initial inspection, you probe the field, it's completely dry. You turn to the people and say, hey, look, the field's completely dry, but we haven't test driven it. You should have the hydraulic load test. No, we don't want the hydraulic load test. Okay, your call, but I can't give you a final on it unless we do that hydraulic load test. That's when people move in <laughs> three weeks later they move their family of five into a house that's been unoccupied for six months that had a failed system before, but is now showing it's okay. Hmm. And now they're bubbling up and things of that nature. So we strongly recommend, well, what I the terminology comes as we strongly recommend, but it is required to get a final conclusion on an unoccupied house to have the hydraulic load test done. If you don't have the hydraulic load test done and just have it inspected, the end of the report states, more investigation needed, required to perform a hydraulic load test in order to come to a final conclusion. You asked me earlier about the reasons that you would do hydraulic load tests. So the first reason is the house is unoccupied for seven days or longer. And the longer it's unoccupied, the more important that test becomes. There are other reasons to do a hydraulic load test, but that generally will come after an inspection on an occupied home. And that would be, and I, I know we, I've, I've given this example before. So let's say you have that, that four trench, three trench system with a distribution box, the box is tilted and all the waters go into one trench. And then you have three dry trenches. So that would be an unsatisfactory situation requiring more investigation. That more investigation would be locate, excavate the distribution box, determine if there is unequal distribution to the, the four trenches or three, whatever, how many trenches there are. Generally, what you'll find is the box is dipped and it's forcing all the water. So you can't just correct the distribution box and create even flow. And there's easy ways to do that, which and I won't bore you with here, but there's easy ways to correct that flow. So we can correct the flow, but what we don't know is where these three trenches, that's no different, even though the home was occupied and water was going out to the field, but it was all coming to the bad trench, we don't know if these three trenches work. So again, even though the home was uh, occupied, no matter how many people were living in it, these three dry trenches with this tr trench oversaturated, these three trenches need to be hydraulically loaded to ensure they work. You can't just say, okay, well, internally level the distribution box, create even flows out to all the trenches, and then you're good. Because these trenches may not accept water or absorb water. 
they'll accept it, but maybe they won't absorb it. But we generally don't talk about those types of hydraulic load tests until that situation comes up. There's no need to confuse people on the initial call-in to say, yeah, well, you might need a hydraulic load test, but we won't know until we look at it. It's just, it's just easier not to do that. Find the issues and make the correction. We got our 400 gallons. The hydraulic load test is uh, what we just did here today. Um, so after you've done your initial inspection, you've located everything, you've determined its operating condition, you then add water to the absorption area based on the number of bedrooms. In this house on this day, three bedroom home, 400 gallons of water. We add it directly to the outlet pipe out to the field. Before we add the water, we've probed the stone aggregate and determined how much water is holding in that stone prior to running the water. So if it's dry, we're gonna add 400 gallons of water and then in 24 hours, when we come back, it's gotta be dry again. Now we expect the water to lift. We'll take that measurement at the end of the 400 gallons, but we have to go back to dry. If it does that, that's a satisfactory day one we're gonna repeat the process 24 hours later. And some people ask, well, why do you do it two days in a row? Well, number one, because PSMA says so, number one. But number two, the reason is, what if the soil was dry just enough below to accept and absorb that first 400 gallons of water, but because we couldn't see it and we're only judging the water in the stone, that 400 gallons went down, but now it's holding under the stone layer. So on the second day when we're adding the water and it comes up, it may come up higher. And then when we come back the third day, it may not go down all the way. So what we're doing is by doing it two days in a row, we're ensuring that the, uh, the soil filter underneath isn't oversaturated, even though it's not showing in the stone. I mean, you could go on for days and days and days and certain systems require that, like a cesspool, not even gonna get in the cesspools. So again, it's like test driving the car. It's, we're test driving that system to make sure that your family, when they move into the home, is going to be able to utilize the water and not have an issue. A satisfactory report is not a warranty or a guarantee that it'll work forever. Again, at some point, just like when you buy a car, you're gonna to have to change your oil, you're gonna to have to change your filters, you're gonna to have to change tires, wear items, things of that nature. Septic systems can be like that. Things are going to happen, things are going to go bad. But for the most part, after putting 800 gallons into a system for two days and it not blowing out and draining, you'll probably be good for a, for a while. No one can tell you for how long, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> your standard inspection is one fee and your hydraulic low test is generally that that inspection fee doubled because there's two visits that are required and then depending on the type of system and if it holds water there will be a third day comeback generally don't really charge for the third day because the second day the hydraulic low test is a little easier because the first day is the hardest because you have to find everything camera everything look at everything dig things up find the field and then run the water for the first day. The second day you're basically found everything and you're just coming back and running the water. Um, but like this system will need a third day because this from yesterday, it held water. I'll be coming back here again tomorrow to make sure that that water level has dropped back down. Yesterday we were around eight inches. I, I'll have to check my notes. I'm pretty sure it was around eight inches of water that we're holding, which seemed a little high for a system that hasn't been used. It was dry. Well, it was still moist, but it wasn't holding water today. So I expect the same result tomorrow. And if it is different, technically it's an unsatisfactory at that point. 